What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part 5 of our Halo 3 lasso run. This is Floodgate. We're going to start this off by looking in this direction as we come into the mission here. And we're going to turn to the right and there's going to be the Arbiter hanging out over by this uh, leg of that anti-air gun we took out in the previous mission. We're going to do the same thing we did on Sierra 117, which is smack him 5 times and then headshot him. And then we want to juggle away his carbine from him so he only has the sword next to him. And then that way you could have him basically forcibly use the sword only instead of the sword and the carbine. Obviously this is something you can't do in co-op because player two will be the arbiter if you're playing in co-op, but that's okay. This is just kind of an extra thing you could do to make it a little easier towards the end, but it's not 100% necessary at all. This is a fairly easy mission to just run straight through, just making it slightly easier in case you have trouble uh, during the ending segments. The last two areas are a little tougher to run through than the beginning. But either way, whether you're solo or co-op, we're just going to start off by running up here. There's going to be two spike grenades by this dead brute on this uh, kind of platform up ahead here. So we're going to grab those, turn to the left, and then on the left side you can see there's another dead brute and he has a hammer. So you definitely want to pick that up. So now you have a battle rifle and a hammer. We're going to go over and we're basically running through the previous mission in reverse now. There's going to be some marines up ahead on the left here and they're going to be overrun by flood. We're just going to ignore their cries for help and just run past this whole section. We're running past pretty much all of the enemies in this mission for the most part. There's going to be another marine being overtaken by infection forms here. We're just going to run right past them. And there's a bunch of enemies in here. And I like to grab the regenerator on the ground. You can see it's right on the floor here. Grab that. You can see I'm throwing a couple frags. You don't need to, but there's more frags to the right by that dead marine if you want to do that. I threw another frag here, and you can see there's two more frags by that dead marine, so you could replenish your frag grenades and uh, throw them as you kind of run past all these guys, but it's not necessary. You can run past them pretty easily without throwing any grenades. We're going to jump up here, and there's a few different ways to get up here, but this is an easy one, and we'll just run past all these guys as well. We're going to turn into the right, and we're going to bust through the glass, and there's going to be a Cortana segment. You want to make sure you don't go into this next section. You can see the doorway up ahead in the corner there. You don't want to go in there while this Cortana segment is happening because that will load the enemies in that are in that room. And if you walk in there mid Cortana interruption, that gives them the opportunity to surround you and more easily kill you. So wait for the Cortana segment to finish so she doesn't hold you back. Then walk in and you could use your hammer to smash these guys as they come around the corner. You could actually smack them through the wall. These are very thin walls, so the shockwave of the hammer coming down totally disregards the fact that there is a wall there. So the wall protects you while not offering really any protection to the flood form. So use that to your advantage. There should be eight there, so once you kill eight enemies, you can move forward. There's another regenerator right here. You probably haven't used your first one yet, but if you have, you have another one you can pick up right here. Uh, if you're playing co-op, you could have your second player pick it up if you still have your old one. So you could have two regenerators at this point, which is always good. We're just going to continue on. There's going to be this little mid-mission cutscene that plays out. You could skip that, so I'm going to skip it here. Over here on the right, there are some dead marines with frag grenades, so you could stock up on those. I'm just throwing a grenade randomly to see what I have selected because I had forgotten. Uh, which one I had selected so I went and stocked up on those again after throwing one and there's some spike grenades in here Where I just went into into that little dark area so we could have full frags full spike grenades going into this next section More battle rifle ammo right here and frag grenades and we're gonna jump down here totally avoiding all these enemies on the left And uh, there's a bunch of friendly elites that are helping us out with uh, distracting them at least We're gonna jump up here jump up here and then up to here and then we're going to jump over the box and ignore all those enemies on the ramp down to the left, but over here we want to fight these guys. So we want to stick these two carrier forms with spike grenades. That's why we switched to those, because it actually contains all of the infection forms within them. If you kill them in any other way, they will just explode and release a bunch of infection forms, those tiny uh, popcorn flood. But if you actually stick them with a spike grenade or a plasma grenade, they will blow up and die and not release any of those guys. Then just clean up the rest of the combat forms with a headshot or a melee. And you don't want to go into the next section just yet. We're going to wait for our elite friendlies to uh, actually catch up to us here. It's certainly feasible for you to just keep pushing through the mission without uh, waiting for your elite buddies. But it's just easier if you do wait for those elites. And then that allows you to just kind of take a back seat. This is why I forced the Arbiter to use the sword only in the beginning of the mission. Because he's going to tear through all of these guys up ahead in the next section. So the Arbiter has joined us up here. I'm just waiting for the survivors, the other remainders, to join us. Sometimes you get only like one or two. Sometimes you get like four or five I've gotten before that survived and joined me. So I'm going to go through the door now, which will load everyone in. And we're going to go up here to this section. And you can see I'm shooting people right now. But you can really just hide right here. And then you can see all those elites push forward into the tunnel. If you stay back, they won't actually move forward. They'll kind of hang back with you. But if you move up to that point that I moved up to, that will be far enough 
into the playable area, into this encounter, where they will actually move forward and take the initiative to, you know, start fighting on their own instead of waiting for the fight to come to them. So at this point, I'm pretty safe. All of the enemies are focused on my elite buddies, and I'm at a safe distance where I could actually still chip in pretty effectively. You can see I'm headshotting a bunch of these guys so they don't overwhelm my elite buddies because they will get overwhelmed eventually. The Arbiter will probably be fine, but the other guys aren't that durable. So you want to kill as many of the Flood as you can with your BR in order to uh, lengthen the life of your other elites, which it looks like they're all dead, because I'll be honest, the Arbiter was kind of slacking. He was kind of just hanging back, watching all of his elite friends die. But we're going to move up here, and there's going to be some more enemies that come in. We could just kind of spawn them in and back up. You could always throw a grenade down here as they fall down. I only got a double kill there. Oftentimes, you could get more than that, because they're all kind of clustered together and bunched up. So a perfectly placed frag grenade will do wonders there, but only got two. That's okay, though, because the Arbiter is moving up and distracting slash killing everybody. I'm going to come up behind this guy and smack him for shields, and then we're going to back up into the tunnel one more time. There's going to be one last wave of enemies that come into this area, and you can see you could just headshot them as they kind of come through that doorway towards you. And then for all the enemies that do get through into this room and they don't actually get headshot by you, they are rewarded by getting slashed to death by the Arbiter. So you just kind of hang back, continue staying in the tunnel, stay away so you don't take any damage, and then the Arbiter will finish off any of the remainders that you did not headshot on their way in here. So we can see he's doing some work right there. And uh, once this area is cleaned up, we'll take a look around, and you'll be able to see that there is more BR ammo in the middle of this room, along with a third regenerator. So if you're playing solo and you still have that first or second regen from earlier in the mission, you might as well just use it right now, and then you could pick up this one for the final section while going into that final section with full shields. If you're playing co-op, up to three of you could have regens at once at this point, which may be overkill, quite frankly, but that's all right. That's fine, too. Better to have extra regen than not enough regen. But we're heading into the final section now, and in this section, you kind of keep doing what we've been doing in this section, which is kind of move forward enough so that the Arbiter moves forward and starts fighting everybody. You can kind of keep leapfrogging each other. Or you could just make a run for it, which is what we're going to do here. Since we kind of took that previous section slow, we actually got reinforcements. You can see they're going to be dropped off right at this starting point, and then they're going to be dropped off ahead at the ending point. You can see there's going to be a phantom in the distance who just dropped off a bunch of elites. So those elites are going to offer distractions. So it's much easier to run past this section when you take the previous section slowly than if you just sped through the whole mission. There's a bunch of different pathways you could take. Oftentimes, most people just jump on this wreckage. I started falling down because I could actually throw my regen down on top of this uh, deployable cover right here, and then I grabbed the deployable cover. So now I have full shield and a deployable cover that I could use uh, when I move up this ramp here. So I could get past all of these enemies and then I could throw down this deployable cover, which will block any of the enemies from moving up towards me and also block their shots as well. So you can see I'm covered from pretty much all those guys down there as uh, I move up to the top of this ramp and then down into this dilapidated, gross, floodified ship. And on my way into this final section, you could see I was kind of running past enemies and smacking them with my hammer as I went. When you hit things with your hammer, it actually acts as a melee and it recharges your shield. So you could just keep smacking people with the hammer, keep that shield up as you run, get in here, get to the end, nothing to it at this point. And that is the end of Floodgate, the quickest, easiest mission in Halo 3. One of the easiest missions in all of Halo, really. But we got a nice long one in the arc coming up for the next one, so I'll catch you for that. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the Scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.